الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الأمين الكريم اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد معدن الجود والكرم وآله وصحبه وبارك وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا حبيبي يا رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليك وسلم Respected brothers and sisters Alhamdulillah the month of Holy uh, the month of Ramadan and the Holy Quran they are very much very close to each other and we can see from our daily practices that in the month of Ramadan we excessively recite the Holy Quran and today I have uh, decided to explain one of the very beautiful surah which each and every individual um, most of them they know the surah and they recite the surah in the uh, salah and especially we praying tarawih nowadays and the tarawih of full quran is not taking place in the masajid and therefore we are reciting tarawih performing tarawih at home and i'm pretty sure that most of us reciting this surah in their tarawih so it would be very uh, beautiful to learn the meanings and a brief tafsir of the surah inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down the Holy Quran as a guidance and this is not the guidance only for the for the Muslims it is guidance for the entire humanity and everything has been mentioned in the Holy Quran as Allah says wala ratbin, wala yabisin, illa fi kitabin mubin, that every single thing of the land and every single thing of the sea or dry and wet everything has been mentioned in the Holy Quran. This book is such that even uh, not just reciting, the touching this Holy Book or looking at the Holy Quran, all of these are counted as the act of worship. So this is, we are fortunate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with such an amazing book. Unfortunately, our connection with the Holy Quran in today's day and age and today's time has been very weak. Probably we have more stronger connection with our mobile phones and our gadgets that we feel now than our connection that we have with the Holy Book. So this is the month of Ramadan and we should uh, try and restore that lost of connection between us and the Holy Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so today we are going to learn the meaning and the brief tafsir of Surah Afil. Now, Surah Afil is one of the very famous surah, and um, most of the children they know this surah, and it would be beautiful to know the meaning and to understand the background and the story behind this Surah Afil. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala He mentions in the Surah Afil a very unique story about uh, the people of the elephant and inshallah in a few in coming uh, moments we will try and we will understand and we will uh, learn the uh, the story of the ashabi field allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the holy quran alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashabi al oh dear prophet did you not see how did your Lord deal with the people of the elephant? Alam yaj'al kaydahum fi tadlil. Did he not put their scheme into ruin? Arsala alayhim tayran ababil. And sent folks of birds upon them. Tarmihim bi hijaratim min sijil. Which hit them with stones of baked clay. فَجَعَلَهُمْ كَاسْفِمْ مَأْكُولٍ So he made them like leftover divert 
leaves of palms devout devout leaves of farm uh, this is the simple translation of the surah which i have mentioned before you now in this surah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned one of the very famous uh, occasion that took place and it is known as the uh, story of ashabi feel the people of the elephant at the beginning of the surah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he addresses his beloved rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi sallam and he uh, mentions that alam tara did you not see and if we look in the history the occasion of uh, ashabi feel it took place 90 days roughly and in another tafasir likes of ruhul bayan it has been mentioned and it took place 44 days before the birth of Prophet So this is to show the certainty of this occurrence and to show that this waqia and this story took place and it has no doubt. And we know that everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Holy Quran, we have no doubt and people should not have doubt in the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, the, this occasion took place about 44 days before the birth of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And Hurti Qais ibn Mukhzama, he says that our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and I, we were born the same year and it was the year of the elephant. So the ulama, they did have mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he restored and he made sure that the respect of the Holy Kaaba is maintained when my beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala wasallam, he arrives in this dunya. And it was um, one of the unique way of punishing these people. If we look at the, um, if we look at the story that what is the, uh, story of the Ashabi field. There was a king and he was known as Abraha and he was from Abyssinia. Even in the time of Jihad, I mean before the arrival of Islam, people had great respect for the Holy Kaaba. Even, even though they used to worship idols, yet the respect of Kaaba it was there in their hearts and they used to take it as the house of God um, and they would do tawaf of the Holy Kaaba and people from around the world, they would travel to the Holy Kaaba to pay their respect. And this was something that Abraha did not like. Abraha from the religion, he was Christian. So he decided that he will build something which will attract people just like people are attracted to the Holy Kaaba. Now, he was missing the point. It wasn't the physical building that was attracting people. It was the might and it was the uh, respect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had put in his house, which we now know as the Holy Kaaba. So he built a very beautiful and very expensive state-of-the-art church in his area in Sunnah and he was hoping that people will leave Kaaba and they will come and visit Sunnah. When this happened the people from Arab they did not like it and the reason was quite simple because Abraha's intention wasn't the right intention and a person uh, from Banu Kinana he went to the church which was made by Abraha and he urinated and he uh, defecated in the church. And when people of Abraha found out, they were extremely angry. And Abraha himself was very, very angry about this action. And he took an oath. And he made the intention that he is going to destroy the Holy Kaaba. Now, what he did, he took a big army and 
In his army, it was enormous and there were enormous and gigantic elephants, and the biggest of all of them was known as Mahmud. And when he reached to Makkatul Mukarrama, near Makkatul Mukarrama, there were some camels, and his army uh, captured those camels and took them with uh, took the camels with them. And among those camels, there were the camels of uh, the Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala the grandfather of our beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and when Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala who he found out that his camels have been captured as well so he went to Abraha Abraha showed respect to her to Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala who and he asked him because Sayyiduna Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala who a he was the key holder of the holy Kaaba as well as he was one of the leaders of the Makkat, uh, the holy city, Makkatul Mukarrama. He showed the respect and he asked them, he asked Hazrat Abdul Muttalib, why has he come? Hazrat Abdul Muttalib ta'ala who told him, uh, you have captured my camels, uh, if you could give those hundred camels back to me. Abraha was quite surprised with the uh, demand of Hazrat Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala and he said to him that I thought you are going to ask me something about the Holy Kaaba and you have come to talk about the Holy Kaaba. Now listen to the reply from Hrte Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala and who Hrte Abdul Muttalib said that I am the owner of the camels so my duty is to protect my camels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the owner of the Holy Kaaba and He will protect His house. Subhanallah. This was the amazing uh, faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the grandfather of our beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala wasallam showed in front of Abraha. Then he left, he came to the people of uh, Makkatul Mukarrama and he informed um, everyone, he informed the tribes to uh, leave their houses and go in highlands because he knew the intention of Abraha. Meanwhile, Hrti Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala who he also knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to protect the Holy Kaaba. So he goes to the uh, the blessed door of the Holy Kaaba and he prays and he makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his words they have been mentioned in the in the tafasir and especially in Ruhul Bayan. I will mention the uh, summary of what uh, uh, Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, O oh Allah, every person protects their belongings and Kaaba belongs to you. So, O oh Allah, protect your house from Abraha. Now, this was the dua at the door of Kaaba by the grandfather of our beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala sallam. So, Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the protector. Even today, people, uh, they get upset because the haram is closed and tawaf maybe is not being done. Or there was a time when nobody was doing the tawaf. The simple question is, uh, you know, the uh, might of Kaaba is not the people around the Kaaba. The might of Kaaba is not when people folks uh, go to visit Kaabatul Mukarramah and folks and show the might. No, the might of Kaaba is the holy Kaaba itself and it still exists and it will be there until the day of Qiyamah. So, Hrti Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he made dua and then everyone, they climbed on the highlands, on the mountains and they waited that what will happen tomorrow, Abraha is going to attack the Holy Kaaba and the day comes, the army of Abraha, they uh, tries to go towards the Holy Kaaba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had his plans and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best planner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the almighty and there is no power and there is no might other than the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Mufassirun says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent the army of the birds and those birds are called Ababil. Now, uh, 
what is Ababil and what kind of birds these uh, they were which were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we have difference of opinions and I will mention one of the narrations from Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha uh, Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha she has mentioned that they were like uh, the bats and some uh, uh, ashab, some of the ashab of our beloved Prophet sallallahu they have mentioned that they were like the uh, the dove pigeons and whichever uh, type of birds they were they were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and each bird they have three pebbles with them and uh, one was in their beak and uh, they had two in their clothes and it, it also has been mentioned in some of the tafasir that the names of each person was uh, carved and written on those pebbles because this was the punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala otherwise we haven't seen uh, a little bird shooting at people and killing them so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sent these ababil on ashabi feel and when they release the pebbles to attack it would land on the people's head and it would pierce through the entirety of their body and then pierce the elephant before finally touching the ground now imagine the power which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in that pebble through those birds that it would pierce the entire body of the person and piercing the elephant and touching the ground and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed, he destroyed the entire army, including the elephants of ashab -e fil Now, there is some beautiful explanation that has been mentioned in Tibyan al-Quran by Allama Sayyidi Saad that why, uh, why were they called ashab -e fil and why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned them as ashab al fil The reason is quite simple. Ashab mean the companions or the friends now when it comes to understanding the animals they do not have intellect as we human being and at the extent that we understand things we understand difference between right and wrong we understand difference between the the oppositions and opposites and things animals don't and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called the people of Abraha the people of elephant or the friends of elephant or someone who, who has befriended with the animals because they did not understand the might of Kaaba and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you try and attack the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect it and there is no power and there is no might which can destroy the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In summary, we learn from this that the ultimate power and the ultimate might is the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Quran has mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them such a way that فَجَعَلَهُمْ كَعَصْفٍ مَعْكُولٍ They were completely perished and they were made like a field which is barren and there is no one there to see them and look at them. So this beautiful incident, uh, this uh, incident teaches us that the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ultimate. Whenever we are in difficulty, we always should seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. And he will be there to protect us and he will be there to help us because he is the protector and he is the Nasir. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all ability and tawfiq to understand Quran and as well as reading and understanding act upon the Holy Quran. Inshallah in coming days we will come up with some more surahs and we will try and learn the meanings and very brief tafsir of these uh, small surahs inshallah jazakumullah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh